Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. And now, for your host, Kimberly McElmore. All right, good evening, and welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses from across the country. I am your host, Kimberly McLemore, CEO and founder of the Women's Small Business Initiative, LLC, and award-winning author. Welcome to another night of sharing. With us, we have Peak Performance Consultant and keynote speaker at Sabrina Runbeck, LLC. Sabrina is a cardiothoracic surgery physician associate with more than 10 years of experience in public health and neuroscience. After overcoming burnout and feeling stuck in a career that drained her, she became became an international peak performance keynote speaker who empowers ambitious health practice owners to give back 10 hours of freedom per week and increase team productivity. This way, they can have more wins in their career and enjoy life more. That's why people call her the queen of performance and productivity. So without further ado, please help me welcome to my platform, Miss Sabrina Runbeck. Hey, Sabrina, how are you? Hey, hey, thank you so much for having me here. And thanks, everyone, for listening in. And we know you can be anywhere and you choose us. So we so appreciate you. Absolutely. And I love that. Thank you so much for saying that to my listeners, because, you know, we always want to make sure that they are feeling appreciated and loved. And they know that I absolutely adore them for being with me for almost five years and hanging out. So tonight we're going to be learning something new and I'm excited to have you on Sabrina. So why don't you just tell the listeners a little bit more about who Sabrina really is? Thank you. Thank you for giving me the platform, the chance. And for anybody who's listening, I am, I, you can't see me, of course, but I am one of those petite Asians who is only child in the family. All my cousins are boys. So growing up, uh, I'm always being told, like, oh, just study, you find a good job, get married, your life is pretty set. And for me, I'm so rebellious in a way. And why should all the boys get to build their own businesses, go to these adventures and do everything they want? Why cannot do the same? So I just kept going. I um, got two bachelors, two masters, got into medicine, and finally got into one of the best heart and lung surgery hospitals in the country and really in the world. Because people fly in internationally to see us, to operate and really cure their lives. And you think this is amazing. I, 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 at some point, I thought, wow, did I made it? <laughs> and um, <laughs> it, 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 at that time, when I was fresh out, you just have all this energy and all this excitement. Yeah, I'm learning. Oh, yeah, I'm young. And you put yourself somehow we pull ourselves down for being young instead Mm -hmm. of actually you're fresh, you're a sponge and you can actually see things that other people don't see that gap. But it's so reverse in the sense that we just want to do more show and prove who we are as a person, our value, Mm -hmm. yada, yada. And that means what? I had to say a lot of yeses. I'm not truly aligned with who I am. I'm mm-hmm. just allowing everybody else, robbing my precious time, energy, and sanity. Now, I know everybody who's listening, you guys probably felt one way or another about this at times, the different moments of your life. You're going so be ahead and never allow yourself just to put the brake on at all because you're trying to get to some type of destination mm-hmm. and I was that way I, mm-hmm. uh, I started working 80 hours a week uh, getting multiple survey cases seeing another new console another problem or oh, this person's calling you felt so responsible for everybody else but then we lose sense of we're actually responsible for our own self mm-hmm. and if we can't give what's best of us we really give what's left of us. Exactly. So I got so burned out, right? Exactly. And yeah. I, I love what you just said. The, the thing that stood out to me first was how you talked about you're being the only girl in the family. And it, in 
I kind of think it, it's not so much just cultural, but even as women as a whole, we always have a tendency to kind of step back, let everybody else, you know, shine sometimes. And then when it comes like into business, that seems, it, it always seems to be a way that let's, you know, deal with the boys first and then we'll get to the, the girls later. And I liked how you noticed that and realized that, no, this can't be right. This is, this has to change. And then even though you were inspired by that, noticing that you want to be the person's in the forefront and, and want to have the business. You also realize that you don't have to have everything that you think that you need in order to have the happiness in order to feel successful and all these things. So when you talked about the 80 hours a week, I don't, I'm not imagining that you didn't do this. You probably did more than 80 hours and didn't even know it <laughs> as well. But you know, what, what is it? That, you know, as we do when we're as in business, you know, we have the tendency of wanting to perform and feel like we have to constantly outperform. When did it really hit you beyond the 80 hours a week that you realize that that's not something you needed to do? That's such a great question. We all have that pivotal moment. Um, one of mine was one day it was hardly eight o'clock in the morning. And I just woke up super exhausted. I was up the night before taking calls, answering pagers. And probably most of you guys don't even remember what pager is, right? Like, <laughs> we can <laughs> use those old school stuff um, mm-hmm. with bad signals. And um, I was having a fever, a 101 degree at a time. And still was standing in front of one of my patients mm-hmm. and trying the best that I can to concentrate and finish that case. And one of my nurses, they all know, I'm typically like listen to music, I'm chatting, I'm like doing things. And that day I was just super quiet. And when I'm quiet and people know it's not really a good thing. <laughs> so <laughs> they were trying to pass me day quotes and cough drops just to keep going. And I know a lot of people who are, uh, if you happen to be in any sort of medical professional, you know, sometimes you're just so restricted by mm-hmm. your condition. And, and even for anybody who's not in medicine, you have felt probably more than one time that your obligation beats out what you know is good for your body. Mm-hmm. And we constantly just gave ourselves the excuse, it's not a big deal. And when it's not a big deal multiple times and your body forces you to stop. And the next morning when I woke up, I can barely get out of bed. Um, my fever wasn't resolving. So I finally have to convince myself I can't go in anymore. Mm-hmm. But the time that I finally talked to my boss and told him I need to take a sick day, the answer was, Sabrina, you didn't thought to tell us sooner? Like, I can plan my sick days. Um, wow. That's the moment I felt like, wow, right? Like, are we just treated by numbers? Are we treated just by production numbers? Mm-hmm. Uh, or are we really treating each other like a human beings? And there's ups and downs in life. And there's always something that we have to reconsider. Um, and that's the time that I realized I see a lot of that in my patients, too. Now, in, in her long there's a lot of older patients, but then mm-hmm. you see the younger ones as well, right? The people who don't take care of themselves and they end up in the hospital. And I don't want to be one of those people. Mm-hmm. So I went back to my root in neuroscience and public health and learning what was the thing that I study and spend years to research on self-management, self-care, and self-efficacy. And what was it from all these bigger peak performers, positive psychologists, performance psychologists, that people in high caliber, in business, athletes, right, demanding career like law, medicine, what do we actually do to keep ourselves in that optimal mental state Mm -hmm. so that we can actually enjoy everything in what's called our desire zone to truly feel free and truly feel fulfilled and we can keep going and sustain that type of level of performance and not feeling like we always have one day good, one day bad, constantly in a roller coaster. 
Right. And, and I agree with that. And I, I, you know, to hear your story and that perspective, and I'm sure that obviously we're not the first people who, you know, kind of hit that wall and have that pivotal moment, but I like how you're explaining that the thought that you can't even take a day off because you're sick is like, wait a minute now, you know, and, and the, the sit back and think about the fact that obviously you have not normally were never taking days off. And like, so you're constantly going and constantly moving but to have that pivotal moment to say, is this all really worth it? And, you know, and to, that to the point you're so tired, you can't even get up out of bed. That That is definitely a moment uh, where you have to open up your eyes and your thought process and say, wow, what is going to be my next step? So as you went through that process, did you actually stay home that day where you, you know, or did you try to go in because of that feeling guilty scenario that he might have given you? I totally stay home because I just couldn't do it. And mm-hmm. I know if I go in, it's probably not going to be that pretty. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like there's no sense of wasting people's time, right? <laughs> so I get that. Yeah. And that, but it's, it's, I think the hard part about this, when you think about it, when you think back, is that it's uh, sad that you feel like you've even had to go that far to realize what you were doing to yourself. And like you said, it, as humans, we, we have this thing about fulfillment self-fulfillment and trying to figure out what we want to do with our lives. And I think a big part of it that I have seen and even within myself and even, and talking to other people, it's, it's, you know, trying to conform, trying to make sure that we're meeting all the requirements that we need to have in order to be successful in our lives, because that's what society tells you. That's what the world tells you. If you do this, you're going to be better. You know, you're going to have more. And so we kind of all run down that path of, okay, we're going to go to school. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then we look up and, and for some people, they never come out of that rut. They're constantly that, um, rat on the wheel that's going around that circle, trying to be that professional, trying to gain that, you know, that dollar that they want you know, because society's telling me you have to have A, B, C, and D in order to be considered successful. So for you, you figured it out and you realize that I've got to get more time back into my life and you have this practice of, of teaching people how to get 10 hours of freedom per week so that they can cr- increase their productivity. Talk a little bit about how you handle that with your clientele or who you're speaking with when it comes to understanding the importance of getting that time back. Yeah, I think everybody uh, that I speak to, especially uh, my high-end business owners, is why I ask them, what is your number one barrier that you're not getting what you want out of life? And it's always time. Mm-hmm. And when we see time as a limiting factor, we already put ourselves into negativity, right? In that lacking state. And one of my core training is in positive intelligence. And it's from my coach who's like a business coach and developed uh, what's called positive intelligence from Stanford. And uh, our idea is your success, right? For most people, they think it's your IQ, your EQ, all the years, the knowledge you build, the skills, right? And people being so obsessed mm-hmm. about learning more, watching more things, right? It's just bombarding your mind with so much more information. Mm-hmm. But what they're not seeing is that doesn't matter all of that. You can have the best knowledge in the world. I believe Napoleon Hill even said that knowledge is not power until you use it. And when you use it correctly, just because you have these knowledge, you have the strategies, tools, but if you're constantly adapting things that are rocking your time, rocking your focus, energy, and sanity, mm-hmm. that's not going to help you move forward. And so why are we having these issues, even though we might have the best team, best um, strategist, why are we not seeing the result, even though we're supposed to implementing? It's the other half of the equation we're missing is called passive quotient. And it has two components. Do we recognize that there are sabotaging tendencies? And do we know that these tendencies are not us? They're just this false persona that we created. Mm -hmm. And there are 10 different categories. And if we can call them out right away, not the next day, right? Weeks later, oh, that's what I did. Well, it's kind of too late, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Can we call it out (laughs) right away? 
Mm-hmm. And when we call it out right away, then we know it's not me. I'm born and you're born perfectly, awesomely. Study been show more than 80% of us forget how awesome we already are. So we needed to be able to identify these things are not serving us right away. That way we can train our brain, what I call them the micro mental vacation. Even under two minutes, you can bring back your focus mm-hmm. and your energy right away. Mm-hmm. Once we can bring ourselves back to that neutral, pleasurable, and present state, then what? We're no longer in fine fly mode. We're in that state that we can tap into our empowerment of being resourceful, being more innovative, creative, being able to just act and know to trust yourself mm-hmm. and be able to be more empathetic toward others and most importantly, toward yourself. And once we go down that path, now we truly empower ourselves to do the right thing. Now, of course, it's not just like, oh, yeah, I do the right thing. We also needed to put our body condition into that optimum state. So some other things I talk to people is really so clear knowing where your aim is Mm -hmm. and knowing where your natural energy cycle is. So we know to tap into those more. Do you know which type of people you are? And knowing that even you might have the best people around your corner, you might still be an accidental diminisher and not allowing their talent to shine if we sort of derail in our own vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like what you said. But I, I like the topic of tapping into your and restoring your energy in two minutes a day. So what is the advice that you give in that two minutes? What is it that you would tell a person to do for two, just those two minutes so you can get the energy back that you just lost. Because like you said, it's one thing to recognize you have a problem, but if you don't do it instantly and you wait till tomorrow, the next day, really the reality is you're going to just continue doing what you've already did. So you're not learning anything from that process. So what is the two minutes of it that you would give advice on to get that, rebuild that energy back up? Yeah, we can do exercise together. Typically, what we want to do is highlighting multiple things all together. Mm-hmm. And some people think it is meditation. Some people think, uh, think it's like a different way of reset. So we are incorporating breathing, your tactile, your uh, proprioception, and um, uh, activating your sympathetic nerve system and highlighting one of our five senses. I usually have people start with touch sensation Mm -hmm. and the most advanced people can use visual cues but we all know vision is pretty distracting in some ways so we start with touch and for anybody who's listening as long as you're not driving (laughs) if you're in your (laughs) office home wherever that is you can't even be outside and just stand there and sit there all right so anyone just put your feet flat on the ground wiggle your toes feeling that you're completely grounded, move your shoulders, back, neck, around, just feeling where everything is and feeling there are more space that are opened up between your ears and your shoulders. Shoulders start to drop backwards, noticing you're not hunching over anymore. There's no pressure on your lower spine, almost like there is a balloon on the top of your head just lifting you up. And you want to close your eyes if you can. Take two really quick deep breaths in and exhale on count of six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold your breath for three, two, one. Quick to inhale, slow breath out on six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold your breath for three, two, one. Now, let your breath ease into your normal rate and rhythm. Maybe you feel a little vibration when you inhale. Maybe you feel some tingling. Feeling the stomach rising and falling. Then we're going to put two fingers together. 
Maybe you're rubbing your thumb to your fingertips, noticing the smoothness, the roughness. Maybe your hand is dry or moist, warm or cold. Concentrating only on the sensation. If there are any thoughts coming to you besides the touch sensation, let them just fly by you like the wind. Forgive yourself for having those thoughts. Go back to the concentration of those touching sensation. Focus with such intensity that you're feeling everything on the tips of your finger. And before you're ready, I want you to set an intention of how you wanted to show up for the rest of this podcast while you're listening or the rest of your day. Once you have that word in mind, go ahead, open your eyes. Okay. I'm look, I'm so busy doing what you're telling us to do that I forgot I'm actually running a show right here. So. <laughs> awesome. That was, what? It was relaxing. How did you like it? I did. Okay, I cool. liked it. I was sitting here doing exactly what you told me to do. And I was like, okay, I think I need to get back on get back into the swing of things here. But the thing I liked is just the seconds of just, you know, sitting still and literally allowing the body just to come to re- realization of total relaxation. And, you know, after a long day, we need that. And in between the day, you need those moments. And especially, um, you know, a lot of us are still teleworking. Um, some people are returning back to work and trying to get back into the rhythm of things, having the opportunity just to say, you know what, I need two minutes for myself. Just give me these couple of minutes. Uh, it is perfect. I definitely enjoyed that. I was like, oh, this is relaxing. Now I got to go back to reality again. <laughs> <laughs> right and then that I resets it. us I, it's a, there's a difference between relaxation mm-hmm. by having a bubble bath temper ourselves vacation versus mm-hmm. these reset moments because we don't have to wait until we're needing to relax to do these mm-hmm. uh, it's easier to fill the tank when it's not quite empty versus waiting for it to completely empty and to fill it back up. And this is what the two minutes can do for you. Mm-hmm. What we did is we, including breath, we slowing down our heart rate by that slow exhale, right? Mm-hmm. And we're noticing the sensation of touch is because our prefrontal cortex is the area that are busy, 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 causing us to analyze endlessly, processing, thinking. And if we can shut that down, I allow these crazy chaos to pass us and just go back to the middle of our brain, that touch, right? Just highlighting one of your senses and you can quickly redirect your mind and to something that will regenerate better neural synapses for Mm -hmm. you. And when we set on top of that, a new intention on how you show up, it's because if our word is I'm strong, right? And then if there's a difficult situation come up, that's unexpected. But if my word is strong, I know I will show up no matter what strong. Mm-hmm. There's no argument in that because I predetermined how I wanted to do instead right. of scrambling at a time. Right. Yeah, what you're doing is that you're allowing us to give ourselves the power to, you know, think positively. And even if something does go wrong, it'll be okay. We've, we already know the circumstances we're in, but we're giving ourselves that opportunity to say, it'll be all right. You can do this. Let's go ahead and move forward, but not with the stress 
and having to constantly react versus just handling it what we, what we need to do at that moment because a, a lot of times I was, obviously we know when we're burnt out and we're tired and you're frustrated things start you know things look at you you look at things differently so that one little um situation can be completely uh go the wrong way just because we're not thinking properly and we haven't taken the time just to you know to breathe and think that you know what everything's going to be okay so like you said I, I like what you said about the fact that you don't wait until you feel like you need to take the moment, just do it is basically what you're saying. You know, go ahead and get those two minutes in whenever it doesn't have to be when you're drained and you feel like you're about ready to fall over the edge. So I think that's a great um, practice to do. And then coming out on the other end, feeling more positive about who you are. And I can think the other question I, I was thinking in my head, I wanted to ask that obviously, you know, people are going back into this movement in 2021 of trying to get back to the norm. And the thing that I've been hearing so much more and paying more attention to is how many people are saying, you know what, I'm not coming back to this job. I'm not doing this anymore. You're going to start treating me like a human being and start respecting what I do. And not even so much just about paying me for what I do, but people are realizing that they have more to live for than just sitting and, and doing this job that they're doing even if they liked it, there's certain things that people are starting to say, I'm, I've had enough. So are you starting to find that you're getting, you're talking to more people or getting more clients who are in, having that same um, philosophy and attitude that they want to change and they want to live their lives a little differently? You have got into something big. Now, I personally help people who are already established mm-hmm. in their business and they are the leader of their uh, company, their uh, network, whether it's as small as five people or larger. Mm-hmm. Right? And no matter what, I do see people have been forced to do self-reflection in the past year due to the constriction that we are in. However, we can pivot out of that. If you truly feel that you are lacking in appreciation on your value, on your time, on your commitment to the company, to the work that you're doing, you have the option to pivot out. Now, before you pivot out, there are a couple factors. I don't personally train people on that, but those are things I direct people to connect with others mm-hmm. too. So number one is finances. How are you finding another place that you feel secure for your current, for your timer, and then lateral or escalating move to a next decision that you can feel good still right and that Mm -hmm. means talk to your financial advisor there are plenty of people actually specializing in pivoting and speak to a career coach who are specialized in finding the next best thing for you right whether you want to completely change uh, or you have this lateral move you know this is what you do best you love what you do but now the people that you're with fine let's find you the best dream boss i talk about that a lot especially with students who are coming out stop thinking about the job description Mm -hmm. but who's going to elevate you in the position you're in right Mm -hmm. um and so you wanted to do what leveraging other people's time and resources and not feeling you are alone in those situations. So when I talk about productivity and saving time, it actually only comes down to five steps. Once you optimize your energy, your focus, your direction, knowing what is in your desire versus distraction, disinterest and drivel, then you only have five options. If you, the quickest to make those decisions you're able to accelerate. So what are the five options? Number one is elimination. There are so many things we don't need to do. We Mm -hmm. don't feel like we have to do, right? It's these sabotaging tendency telling us we have to (laughs) because we feel like, oh, there's no time, no money, no resource. Right. Now, the second is creating some type of system or automation that it doesn't take a manpower to actually do the busy things, the mundane things, right? Mm-hmm. And, and again, there are some people are really smart about creating these systems to set up and run it itself. And third thing is delegation. Right? There's such a power in knowing 
other people's genius zone is different from yours. So why not exchange your geniuses or leverage those other people's genius? Even you might be in the same department, you can still learn these other skills that other people have. Now, then what? Now we come down four and five. Now is you can purposefully delay. So there is a time to procrastinate and the only time to procrastinate knowing it's not something that we can eliminate, not something that we can create automation, delegation. Now is I can delay that. It's not mm-hmm. going to make that much a move for me in my life right now. Therefore, I can wait on it. But then the last thing is concentrate. You know this is going to be a big deal, right? You can bring in that million dollar contract. You have this big client coming up. You have this big proposal and you have to concentrate. And when we concentrate, it's not to say we spend all day, every day into it. Then you're going to burn out again. Mm -hmm. It's how to logically and block out time when you do it right, time become expanding. And instead of you're always running out of time. Wow. Look, you had just dropped some major, as I call them, pink nuggets tonight, you know, to the listeners. And I'm hoping people are truly hearing what you're saying, because everything that you're talking about is really valuable when it comes to giving yourself the permission. Again, it's about not just constantly moving and going and going around in a circle and getting nowhere. You are literally, truly showing people and speaking to them in a way to where they're they're utilizing their time, utilizing the resources, knowing when to say no, knowing when to say I'm ready to move forward and knowing when to put things on hold. That I mean, that's that is very, very practical. And with the way the world is today, like I was saying earlier, that I think there are many people who are constantly paying more attention to themselves after everything we've been through. Um, you, we, we've had plenty of time to reanalyze, to rethink what are we doing? What could we be doing differently in our own personal selves so that we're more fulfilled? Um, so we're, we're actually living and not just existing and, and making sure that any of the changes or whatever it is that we're trying to improve, that we're we're doing the improvement for the right reasons and not just because it's based on, well, is it about money, you know, because 90% of the time people think that if they make a move, well, they're going to pay me more. Well, what else are you getting out of that besides just a check, you know? So I think that uh, the, the things that you teach are very um, empowering and absolutely has some, gives you some ambition, but the drive that it gives you is all about being powerful within yourself. And I, and I really, I've enjoyed having this conversation with you, but there's a couple of things I would want to ask you about. I know you have your own podcast and so want you tell us a little bit about your podcast. Cause I always love talking to my podcasters as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I am uh, in the healthcare space. I do heart lung surgery. Because I was so burned out in that space, I wanted to give back. I know we can all fall back in love with the career that we picked Mm -hmm. um, and don't feel like we're losing something that we devote so much in. So I create a podcast to look into life can be more. Life doesn't mean that you took a degree and that become your identity. We can all be more. And what does that mean to be more? Uh, That means knowing your career is uh, can be expanding laterally and vertically mm-hmm. in any direction that you want to. And a career growth is different from a financial intelligence. And that's also different from having your personal mission in life. And that also relates to how do you sustain your quality of life with your social support, with your love relationship, with family, and with your own physical fitness. And it's different from mental well-being. So I teach a lot on developing what's called mental immunity. And even myself as a coach, because mm-hmm. it's hard, right? We can all learn, listen, and it's like, is this great? This is so motivating. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Then I go, how? Right. When? Mm-hmm. What's the step? And it is difficult sometimes. And that's why you have people like us who have these shows to support you. And with my high-level clients, I'm there one-on-one with them mm-hmm. and support. And I train our team the same way as well because we know accountability is not just saying and it happens. And when you have individual scenario, situation, 
we need to work it out right away. If、mm-hmm. we have questions, then we doubt ourselves, and then it become disempowering when we don't really know the solution.、Mm-hmm. Right, you're absolutely right, and I liked what you just said. The fact that it's one thing, you know, to get all hyped up, and you know, we have it's like you have a lot of people who, who、um, speak to us per se. You know, you're sitting and you're listening to somebody, and they get you all revved up, and you're ready to go when you're in the room. And then once you kind of walk out of that room and you're in your own atmosphere, it's well, what what are the next steps? How do we actually move ourselves forward and keep that motivation and keep that power without having to go over? You know, and and kick or kick it over to the point where we're drained again. I love what you just said. I mean, that it is important, and you're right. You know, there are people like us who are here to provide that information so that you are more aware of how you can handle yourself. And I think a lot of times,、um, people kind of don't understand that when we're in business, it's not about you being just like us. It's really about you finding your way. We're just giving you the tools and resources that you can utilize to help you benefit, so you're not going through what we went through. And so, you know, I, I like I said, I really enjoy listening to what you're saying and, and everything you're saying. It's a lot of it is common sense, but but a lot of times we don't use the common sense that we have because we're so worried about meeting those goals. You know, making sure that we're do- dotting those eyes and crossing those T's and not realizing what we're doing to ourselves in order to get there. And the other thing, I think a lot of times we. We always think we have tomorrow. We always think that we have to do, you know, look out to the future five, ten, fifteen years. We don't know what that's going to look like. So we really do have to focus more on today and and how we are going to be sustainable and and what makes us happy in life, but still be able to maintain our careers and still have the passions that we have. So you know, like I said, what you're doing is. Is excellent, and I applaud you. And I, I, I hope that we continue to see you grow. But I also want you to talk a little bit here quickly about you are an international best-selling author. You have a book called Asian Women Who Boss Up. Love the title. Tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we just thought there's not really a book with multiple Asian women on the cover, and we definitely see some Asian women、uh, majority in the entertaining. Industry, but not so much as CEOs、uh, and all the other fields that are deemed as are you really working, right?、Mm-hmm. And then it's it's funny how、um, when you talk, and I even I'm I'm speaking on、uh, conferences, shows, and my mom was、uh, asked me, oh, awesome that you're on TV. Did you get paid? I'm like, mom, it's not about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's. it's Hilarious, and sometimes like what they value as success, or what they value as the return on investment.、Mm-hmm. Um, but it, the important thing is, is we're trying to say, no matter what path you choose, you can forge your own path.、Mm-hmm. And we might have came out of a perfect、um, pick a fence family, but that doesn't mean you're gonna grow into who you define as fulfillment and success in life. And you can be a teacher. You can run business. You can do whatever you want to do. And it's your choice. It does not depend on anybody else's. But how you are enjoy every step of the way, and not feeling like you're constantly chasing something、mm-hmm. and waiting for something to happen. So this book has 18 of us who each of us share a story, and then I share my journey and my steps on. What does it mean to be a peak performer?、Um, and people can grab a copy of the book. And、uh, one of the bonus I gave out is、uh, a complimentary consultation. Usually, I only do that by referrals、uh, or with、uh, one my book purchase.、Mm-hmm. So, for all the audience for the show, if you are in a place that you are just on the go all the time, you have a lot more that you wanted to give, but feeling like You are at your capacity, but you know there's more. Then feel free to、uh, find the link in the show notes and have a conversation. See if I can add any value to you or not. Absolutely, that's excellent. So we're going ahead, and you're telling us how we can get the the free bonus gift. So tell us,、uh, the listeners. Where else? Where else they can find you? You know, kind of give us some of your social media、uh, information, your website, and so forth. I am very active on Instagram and LinkedIn. Feel free to message me over there. And for those who wanted to have a, a free open conversation, you can go to my website, 
sabrinarombach.com forward slash blueprint. Let's see if we can create some type of steps and blueprints for you to be able to sustain and level up your performance while saving you hours out of your day and your week. Uh, so you don't feel like you have to be on the go all the time. It just the society made us this way and you can truly enjoy everything that you can have. Exactly. I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> So you're absolutely right. So Sabrina, it has been such a pleasure having you on the show tonight. Before you go, do you have any last words that you would like to say to the listeners this evening? Yes. So my slogan has been, you have to say no to almost everything. Then you can say heck yes to the only things that truly light you up in life. Excellent. I like that. Absolutely. And I, you know what? You're absolutely right. I think the biggest problem we have is that we say yes to too much. And then when we want to say no, we realize that we've, it's too late. So, you know, you're, you're going to show up, but then are you really showing up? So definitely enjoy that again. Thank you for coming on to the show this evening. It has been such a pleasure to learn about who you are and what you've uh, been doing. Your accomplishments have been phenomenal, but the best accomplishment is that when you know what it means to be a peak performer, but by doing it the right way and sharing that with everybody else and uh, to the listeners, um, obviously you, I hope you've been listening um, to this sh uh, show tonight. And obviously if you've missed out, you can go back to the replay and listen to it again. You, if you missed out on some major, major pink nuggets, I mean, she just dropped so many things that Brina did that, you know, I'll even have to go back and listen two or three times because there was so much great information. So, you know, don't, allow yourself to do things that you're not ready to do and not, don't want to do. Allow yourself to live the life that you want to live. If you would like to talk more about this, you can also reach out to me when it comes to talking about your dreams and t turning those dreams into reality and not just goals, but doing the things that you want to do that are going to benefit you. You can reach out to me at Kimberly at WSBILC at gmail.com so we can have that conversation. And then of course, if you want to learn more and want to have more of your resource for success programs, you know, please donate to support the podcast. Um, you can use our cash app, which is the dollar sign and the, and the name is K-M-C-L-E-M-O-R-E, -E, or you can go to www.wsbilc.com, which is the website to do the donation there. And again, we would like to thank you all for listening to the show tonight. We will be back next week with more amazing guests. Be sure to follow us on iHeartRadio or download our mobile app on Google Play or wherever you listen to your podcast. But until then, you enjoy the rest of your evening and good night. Good night, everyone. We will be back next Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Follow us on Spreaker, www.spreaker.com slash user slash WSBI. View our new WSBI website anytime at www.wsbillc.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. 